Have you ever wanted to take your motorcycle somewhere far away? Have you ever wanted to just jump on your machine and ride and just ride until the horizon in some new location and all of a sudden you find yourself there and you're like, wait a minute, I did not plan this through or think this through at all. Today's video is going to help you because we are talking about riding in unfamiliar locations. But I think this one's really important because a lot of new riders are just kind of in this like 30 to 50 mile radius around their house, right? Yeah, I mean, how many times have you ridden the same road every weekend? It, yeah. I did the same thing and then eventually you get bored and you want to go somewhere else. Yep. Yep. You eventually want to go and see those different horizons, new mountains. You might even fly out somewhere, rent a bike, and then ride somewhere new. But there's a lot of considerations you should be thinking about before you go and ride in that unfamiliar place. And today, we're going to walk you through all the things you need to think about when you get to that unfamiliar place and ride for the first time. Before we jump in, a big shout out to today's sponsor, Manscaped. Jeez. All right, guys, as you know, as motorcyclists, sometimes you got some crazy smelling fluids lying around in the shop, some sort of mixture of gas and oil and crazy stuff that just stinks up the place. But you know what else is stinking up the place? You, with all your gooch juice walking in here. Don't worry, Manscaped has the solution. They've just released a brand new line of body wash, shampoo and conditioner, deodorant, hydrating spray for your body. That's crazy, you don't have to rub it anymore. That's fantastic. Deodorant and lip balm as well. I know you got crusty lips after riding and I don't wanna see them. Hit the link down below and get yourself 20% off your order added automatically and free shipping as well. Get yourself unstinked. All right, Spike, we thought of today's video because we are actually in an unfamiliar place today. We're in Southern California here. I'm here for basically the whole month of May. You're here picking up a Pan Am, riding it back to Austin, doing a lot of unfamiliar riding. Last weekend, you were in Arkansas doing some riding. Yep. Uh, you've done a lot of unfamiliar riding this year already. Um, I know. It's been wild. I've, I've done more riding on a single motorcycle than I ever have before. It's yep. been pretty wild. Yeah, you've already clocked in 4,000 miles in the KLR in different places. Since February. Yeah, which is which is pretty incredible. Yeah, that's a lot of mileage <laughs> I've like seen. But when it comes to riding in a new place, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? The first thing that comes to my mind is getting a phone mount because mm. you're going to need a map at some point and you need to have the ability to look at it while you're riding. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you don't want to ride staring at your phone, but you need to be able to see it mm -hmm. because it just makes your life so much easier. And all of my bikes have a phone mount. I even brought one so I could put it on the Pan America while I ride back. Yep. Even though it's got navigation, I like running stuff off my phone because it's just it's simpler. Yeah. I uh, think that having a phone mount is a great idea. If you don't want to have a phone or a screen on your bike, some people are weird about that, you can always pipe in uh, map communications via a Cardo or something like that. Um, you can uh, have Google Maps running and it'll kind of tell you turn by turn uh, with the voice command in your headset uh, where to go. Sometimes that doesn't work at great. Actually, we ran into that today where the kind of the Google map is just a little quiet. I can't quite hear it, you know? So mm -hmm. having a map is definitely one of the best things to do. Um, for me personally, the first thing I do and the first thing I think of is I just like plot myself down on Google Maps and just kind of scout out a whole area. I'll do street views on stuff. I'll see what is or is not a passable road. I try to do some research on forums based on roads I want to go ride, especially here in Southern California where we are. Uh, there's a lot of cool dirt roads I wanted to go and check out and they're gated off because they're Indian land or because somebody turned it into a hike and bike trail or something else. So I love doing background research online before hitting them up. It's funny because I actually am the opposite way. <laughs> when I went to Arkansas, I didn't do any research whatsoever. Oh, I just kind of followed my nose once I got there. Yeah. Um, but that resulted in me being like, yeah, I saw some good stuff, but I'm not sure if I saw everything. Yeah. I did talk to some locals, though. Uh, you know, I pulled up at a bar, and it was run by a lady who has been riding in Eureka Springs forever. And, you know, I was like, hey, where's some good spots to go? And she was like, check out Magazine Mountain. So I mm -hmm. highly recommend that if you're going to be like me and you don't want to do a whole bunch of prior research, at least buy a beer for somebody in town yes. and listen to them tell you where some great spots are because the locals will know. Yes, getting intel from local people is the best thing you can do. There might be a road or a trail or something that you've never heard of uh, you can't find on Google Map or something like that, and it's just awesome. Um, also, great way to get good food recommendations and oh, yeah. drink recommendations too. Always nice if you're visiting somewhere. Um, what's the next thing you think about, Spike? The next thing I think about is how I ride when I'm out there. Mm. Because if I'm on a road that I have never ridden before, I do change my riding a little bit. I keep Same. it a little bit chiller, but I also am very focused on two things, and that's covering my front brake, as in just in case, 
uh, which I'm starting to do more often because you should be doing that anyway. But I'm really, really focused on that when I go down a new road as I keep my front brake covered and I look as far down towards the vanishing point of a corner mm -hmm. as possible because that allows you to look and see anything that's way out ahead and react to it faster. It's super important if you've never been down a road before it's really easy. It's really easy to get uh, caught out by a corner that tightens. Totally. On you. Um, How many of those did we see in Malibu? Oh yeah, it was just everywhere, right? And if we had not been riding at that kind of four tenths, much more chill pace, if you were out there trying to win some sort of trophy on some Malibu Canyon road, you'll get chopped up so fast on a decreasing radius corner. Um, Got to ride within your means when you're on an unfamiliar road. Uh, I've seen so many guys, even on press launches and stuff, man, I don't want to name names, but I was in Sardinia doing the Tuareg 660 launch. Dude, these guys are out there riding those twisties like like their lives depended on it. I was like, what is happening? Why are we like trailing it into like apex and going wide open? I'm like, no one's going to ride a Tuareg like this, you know, like relax, <laughs> chill out. And these are all like, you know, 40 or 50 year old guys. Um, and so, you know, Another big thing, too, is if you're out there in an unfamiliar place and you spot another motorcyclist, do not ride with them. No. They may know the road like you don't know at all, and they are going to go at a pace that you are not prepared to go at, most likely. Mm -hmm. Don't follow random people if you're not super familiar with the area. Also, uh, not not just following them into corners, but if you form up on somebody, like you're like, yeah, we're suddenly biker bros. Uh, Man, you don't know those people. <laughs> you don't know how they ride. You don't know if they want to be in the middle of the lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't know if they're drunk. Like, you don't know anything. You, you, you Sure, give them the biker wave, but you want to stay a couple bike lengths back just so that you can react when they react to something. Yeah. Because they're just some rando on a, on a motorcycle. <laughs> that's the only thing that's got <laughs> you and them have in common. That's it. That's it, dude. That's it. And it's, it's a good starting point, but yeah, like you don't know anything about that person. But that brings me to my next point is that if you're going out and riding in an unfamiliar place, if at all possible, go with a friend or at least a couple friends. Yeah. If you're in somewhere where you don't know the lay of the land, if anything happens to you, you don't have a good sense of how to have an extraction plan for yourself. You don't know how you're going to get out of there. You don't know how far away it is to walk to a gas station or whatever it is having a buddy on an unfamiliar place is the way to go you should not be riding alone in places you don't know yeah i mean we encountered that today where i needed your help to bail the pan am out yeah if i didn't have that i would be camping out here <laughs> yeah you'd make a whole new life out here in these hills <laughs> you'd slowly disassemble the pan am and eat it you know <laughs> Um, so yeah, I think getting a buddy, getting a group of buddies also makes it a lot more fun too. But again, that goes back to riding within your limits. A lot of times newer riders, I'd say a year or two under the belt of riding, uh, they, uh, the testosterone builds up. You want to ride mm -hmm. fast. You want to keep up with your buddies. And that's how people get chopped up for sure. We see it all the time in Austin. People come down to visit and they ride our famous Lime Creek Road. And there are so many plastic pieces strewn on that road. <laughs> oh, man. There's just bits and pieces everywhere. Because <laughs> that road has so many decreasing radius turns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what else do you look for? So another thing that I'm thinking about when I'm out riding somewhere different is how long am I going to be on the motorcycle? Yes, yes, yes. I yes. am completely comfortable riding a motorcycle for 10 hours mm -hmm. because I've done it a bunch now. You should ride uh, my Husky for 10 hours. I don't want to <laughs> ride that for 10 hours. I'm good, thanks. I could probably do that for like two times. Yes, yeah, me too. Um, yep. But you you got to think about how far you're going because especially if you're going yes. out somewhere and you, your, like, base camp is elsewhere, you have to come back. Yeah. So if you're going to ride 200 miles out to some mountain road, you got to ride 200 miles back, plus the mountain road that you're out there to see. Yes. And that takes a long time to do. Yeah, and you got to think about range, too. If that mountain road is 50 miles away, and then you're there, and you plan to do one run up the road and then come back, you're like, okay, that's like 120 miles of range. I can do it. If all of a sudden you just give it too much gas on the mountain road and you do one or two runs, you won't have enough fuel to come back. So you definitely want to be aware of where you're getting fuel, how far that range is, and what kind of riding you're going to be doing and how long. Piggybacking off what Spite said too, I think it's really important if you're riding in an unfamiliar place to just kind of like, if you can ride for 10 hours, like you said, I think like, why not just do six or seven, you know, yeah. stop and do some sightseeing, you know, don't try to pack in too much in one day. You're going to have a bad time if you're just on the bike constantly. You're going to want to get off, take some photos, eat some stuff, plan for that amount of buffer time. Otherwise, you're just going to be on the bike the whole time and you'll have nothing to show for it. 
Yeah, guys, I did a 16-hour iron butt coming back from <laughs> Atlanta to Austin I on the KLR. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. It was miserable. It was miserable. Yeah. After a certain amount of time on the motorcycle, you stop having fun. Absolutely. So yeah. I, what the way that I like to do my long hauls is I like to do, you know, two hours on the bike, 45 minutes off, something yeah. like that, and then just rotate and rotate and rotate. Usually mm-hmm. that's about a tank of gas. Yeah, me. yeah. I think that's a great way to do it is run through a tank of gas, stop, kind of gather a little break recollect a little bit jump back on go again um i think the longest ride i've done was like it was like it was 10 hours from galeana to austin from mexico back into the states Mm -hmm. which took a while longer because of the border crossings and the fuel stops and all that stuff but it stops being fun after a while man for sure like at some point you're like i just want to be done i I don't want to be on the stupid bike anymore (laughs) yeah i would like to just be sitting in a nice comfy chair even even if you're on a gold wing it the miles do catch up to you you might think that you have the greatest touring motorcycle in the world and maybe you do but the question the bike can go forever but can you probably not yeah you got to really think that through and especially on very comfortable bikes like that too fatigue can set in way faster than you realize um and it's very dangerous to be falling asleep behind the handlebars if you're ever feeling kind of kind of dozing off and that sort of thing pull over immediately man pull over do not play around falling asleep on a bike yeah and another thing that if you're going to go long distances that i highly recommend you put on your motorcycle is a solid toolkit i brought one that helped us today it helped us today i have a toolkit that i pulled off the klr that has enough stuff in there to allow me to get in and take apart most things. Like, I'm not talking about you need stuff to break the engine apart. Yeah. Because if your engine is leaking fluids, you're probably screwed. You're going to want to call a tow truck. But if your parts are falling off the bike, you should have some zip ties to put them back on. Uh, I always carry an air pump when I go out. Uh, Mm -hmm. Mine runs off of the bike's battery, which is kind of nice. It means I can put it on any motorcycle, but... There are a lot of options for a battery-powered pump that you can get that you just throw in your saddlebag and you're all good to go. Yeah, you should definitely plan to be a little self-sufficient and prepared. I think a roadside toolkit, a plug kit, bare minimum for sure for long-distance, unfamiliar riding, definitely. For sure. Because you don't want to be caught out in the middle of nowhere with a flat tire and no way to at least try to pinch it back together. Um, I'd, I'd like to be able to at least attempt to put it back together before I have to call a tow truck. Yeah. That's my thing. I think another big one that people don't think about enough, and I've said it before in videos and you guys clown me for it, is I think fluids and snacks, absolutely essential. You should have water or Gatorade. You should have some almonds, some peanuts, some high-density, calorically dense foods that you can easily store on you as well. Uh, You can buy some uh, cycling gels or cycling blocks. Those are really good too because they're super calorically dense, meaning that you could probably go all day long. What's your preferred snack on the road? Usually it's peanuts. You're a peanuts guy. I like like carrying peanuts around because they, they store really 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 well yeah so if you have like a hot saddlebag or something it's it's not gonna get funky in there um and then many times at the shop he goes to pick up his keys unshelled peanuts just come out of his pockets i'm like what are you doing it's Mm -hmm. it's it's crazy it's just they they live in my saddlebags (laughs) i got little peanut plants in there uh i also will always throw gatorade in my bike i I literally bought four bottles of gatorade today before we came out for this shoot yeah Uh, and i've gone through three of them so far i will go through the fourth yeah yeah, I always carry a, a two-liter uh, Camelback with me, basically, on every big ride like today. I mean, we've been out since 9 a.m., and it's almost 5 p.m. now. And so, yeah, you don't want to play around not being hydrated for eight hours while you're outside and doing physical activity. Because, like it or not, riding a motorcycle can be pretty physical. You are doing something with your body. Especially in a place like this where it's low humidity and mm-hmm. there's wind blowing. You don't realize how fast you dehydrate. Totally. Yeah. So Yeah, I feel like I haven't broken a sweat all day, but I've been... I've been peeing, you know, it's yeah. coming out. You know what I mean? You got to be careful. Then the last thing I would do before you get out and get on the road, and you've got this whole big trip planned. You've got all your stuff on the motorcycle. I would stop and take a look at your bike. Make sure it's in good shape. Check stuff like your chain, check your tires, check your oil, check god, your brake check fluids. Check those tires. Oh my God, check the tires. I actually, on the ride to Arkansas, two guys ended up showing cords through the ride because they didn't have tires uh, set fresh. They had kind of old rubber and it wasn't filled up all the way and they they went real bald on those tires after yep. riding on the highway for eight or nine hours. So... You really want to make sure if you're going to do big distance, it's just put a fresh rear tire on at yeah. the very least. It, yeah. Your front's probably fine. You can probably do two rears for every front. Yep. But if you've done one one rear already on the same front, you should just replace the whole set 
and get yourself out there on actual safe rubber. Because once you show cords, oh my god, it's game over. Yeah, you you don't want that. And then uh, brake fluid. It's another one that you're easy to. Super easy to not flush those fluids. Yeah, and just sit there with caramel fluid in there. Even if you have, you know, it hasn't been the two years that your manual recommends, I would just knock it out. It's 10 minutes in the in the shop, man. It's yeah. really not that big a deal. And then your chain. You want to make sure that your chain is set up good and you've, you've got a nice life left in it. Yep. Because uh, if you end up with some, like, uh, chain lash, driveline lash. It's first of all, it's going to make the ride really unpleasant. Yeah. And second of all, it's going to potentially break your chain while you're riding, and that's yeah. big bad. That is bad. Um, I have personally never seen a chain break. I will say it's pretty rare. They're it is. pretty robust. If it was installed by you know someone who knows what they're doing, who actually like seated the master link on there correctly, but if you did it yourself and you didn't get the nice rounded thing on the edge of the lip and the pin and everything, it could come off. You know. Um, yeah, but, I mean, so it's, a, a chain that's seen a bunch of miles starts to fatigue and stretch, yeah. and they don't stretch uniformly, so it's nope. possible that your once part of your chain is nice and taut, another goes loose, and then it gets taut again. Yeah, that puts a lot of force on your sprockets, it puts a lot of force on the chain, and it can break it. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you got good tires is the only thing touching the ground. Good chain, obviously, because that's putting the power to the ground, and then obviously brakes so that you can stop and uh, do that so effectively. Uh, but guys, I think that's gonna wrap up today's video for riding on unfamiliar roads. What do you think? Do you have any other tips or tricks that we may have missed in today's video? Let us know in the comments down below. Thanks so much for Manscaped for supporting today's video. And we will catch you guys the next time. See you later. Keep watching. Watching.